This program is sponsored by Tilson Solicitors. Assalamualaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of The Legal Forum. Each week in the program we discuss common topics which may guide you with the legal advice you may be seeking. By breaking down the complex language of law we discuss these topics in layman's terms by providing case study examples and common scenarios from our expert guests. We also look at some of the most commonly asked questions. Now, as always, please do bear in mind the views and opinions expressed in legal forums should be considered for informational purposes only and not case-specific legal advice. All topics are discussed in a generic nature and it's important that you consult either with a CAB, Law Centre or a solicitor before relying on it. Right, today's topic is power of attorney and lasting power of attorney. To discuss these details, I would like to welcome back to the show Shaquille Shah, an experienced solicitor with over 20 years of experience. Today, he's going to be giving us his insight into these subjects. Shaquille, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. Nice to I'm see fine. you again. Thank you. Thank you. Right, lasting power of attorney, power of attorney, okay. two similar sounding uh, case uh, scenarios, but obviously very different. Uh, power of attorney, first of all, what is that? Who needs it? A power of attorney is a legal document where a person called a donor authorises a person called an attorney to act on his behalf and in his name. Uh, an example may be if I was going on a Hajj pilgrimage, mm -hmm. I would give you an ordinary power of attorney to look after my financial matters whilst I'm away. Or if I'm in hospital, I may ask you to look after my financial affairs. Now, an ordinary power of attorney can be time specific or in relation to a particular project or a particular matter you want your attorney to deal with. Mm -hmm. And it comes to an end when the donor revokes the power of attorney or loses his mental capacity. Okay. So setting up, okay, say you're on a hard pilgrimage and you want to set up a power of attorney. How do you go about doing it and what benefit do you have by setting one up in the first place? Uh, a general power of attorney? Yes. Well, the benefit is that if you're unable to deal with your financial matters, then someone that you trust can deal with it. Obviously, the attorney you choose is someone who should be trustworthy. Questions you obviously need to ask yourself is how good does the attorney, how well does the attorney look after his own financial affairs mm. before you let him loose on your own? So, you know, it could be for a specific purpose. If I'm going on holiday, say, touring around the Middle East, and that's going to take two, three weeks, and then I'm going to go to the Far East, and I need someone to look after my affairs during that period of time, then you can actually have an ordinary power of attorney. But an ordinary power of attorney is not something that really is meant to last indefinitely. You can have a general power of attorney, which gives you as much power as a donor, but normally power of attorneys are for a specific reason or for a specific time. Is it something that people probably should be thinking more about of putting in place a power of attorney? Or, or Because, you know, if I've been on holiday um, to the Middle East or the Far East or wherever I go, uh, having a power of attorney for my affairs is probably something I've, I've never thought of before. Well, it gives you peace of mind. Uh, yeah. If you were to get your wife to be your power of attorney or your brother to be a power of attorney, you don't need to rush back from the Middle East to deal with an important matter when your attorney is here can act on your behalf. Okay. Um, now, power of attorney, the word obviously is, in, we hear it in the American dramas, the attorney is a, is a solicitor, a lawyer, but being a power of attorney or having power of attorney, do you have to have any kind of well, um, uh, characteristics behind you to be one? Well, no, an attorney could be any person. It doesn't have to be a solicitor, an accountant. It could be any person. It could be your brother, it could be your sister, it could be a colleague, uh, it could be anyone. You don't need legal qualification to be really the qualification you want your attorney to have is be trustworthy okay. and that's all that matters. So what areas can they cover? I mean, uh, you've given somebody power of attorney to your legal affairs or, or financial affairs. What can they actually do on your behalf that you can't when you're away? More or less anything that you can do, but it's only in relation to financial affairs, which uh, really does not deal with health and welfare. And that's where lasting power of attorneys come into play because whilst you have your mental capacity, 
you can give a power of attorney, but if you lose your mental capacity, then the power of attorney comes to an end. And really, that's the time you need someone to look after your interests, and that's when a lasting power of attorney will come in. So we'll touch on more of the lasting power of attorney in a minute. But so, for instance, though, um, lasting power of attorney, if I wanted to put that in place now, and I may, may be medically incompetent whenever, you know, goodness in forbid the future. That, that in the, in the future, good, good way to put it, um, if that happens, then that will kick in and take over. But I could set that up now, is that right? Well, you can. Uh, a financial and property affairs lasting power of attorney uh, can come into play as soon as it's registered and your attorney can act on your behalf with your consent while you still have your mental capacity. And then later on, if you lose your mental capacity, then attorney can take the decisions on his own. Now, setting this whole process up, so you're put, giving somebody the power of attorney over your financial matters, is it a, a, an expensive thing to do? Does it have to be started the process in the presence of somebody like yourself in the first place? How does it work? Well, let, let's look at the reason what would happen if you don't have a lasting power of attorney and you lose your mental capacity. First of all, your relatives would need to apply to the Court of Protection to become deputies. Mm -hmm. That can cause delay and be very expensive. Also, the Court of Protection may have someone look after your interests which you may not want. The delay may cause financial difficulties to your family. Uh, someone else would make a decision regarding uh, life-sustaining medical treatment you might need. So. The cost of a lasting power of attorney is so much less than applying to the Court of Protection. It costs £82 to register a power of attorney. You don't need a solicitor, but if your affairs are complex, then my advice is to actually get a solicitor to do your lasting power of attorney. Now, as in this show, we like to talk about layman's terms and hopefully with the people at home who are watching today to make it easy for everybody. But on a scale of one to ten, how is important is it that w that we should think really importantly about having a power of attorney and lasting a power of attorney? Because it's something, if I'm honest, that I've never even thought about. I don't think many people do, but if you look at it on the basis that most people would have a will, and a will will come into play if you die, but not a lot of people take into consideration that if they have an accident or an injury and they don't die or lose their mental capacity, what will happen? And really, if you're considering making a will or you have a will, you should also have a lasting power of attorney. So lasting power of attorney, obviously in the name giving it away, is a lasting power of attorney. It is. Does that, is, are there any thresholds and time spans on that, how long that lasting power of attorney actually does last? Well, the lasting power of attorney lasts until you die, and when you die, then your will will come into play. Uh, there's a number of other ways that a lasting power of attorney could end. You could revoke it. Mm -hmm. uh, your, depending on how many attorneys you've chosen, uh, if you've chosen one attorney and the attorney becomes bankrupt, refuses to become an attorney or your attorney is your spouse, your wife or your husband and you get divorced, then they can't be your attorney, in which case your lasting power of attorney will end unless you've actually got replacement attorneys. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a broad spectrum of how it can all play. But if I, for instance, at the time in my life, I, I've decided to set up a lasting power of attorney with somebody I know, somebody I hopefully have trusted, and then I've changed my mind two or three years down the line and I thought, do you know what? Shaquille Charles, the man I want to give as my uh, lasting power mm. attorney, or somebody in that matter. How easy is it to change your mind if you should want to do that? Well, you can contact the Public Guardian Office mm. and uh, change your attorney. It, it might be easy, I suppose, for the viewers and layman, if, if I explain the procedure yes. to get a lasting power of attorney. So uh, you would obviously have the d download the forms uh, for the lasting power of attorney, and there's two types. One is for financial affairs and one is for health and welfare. Uh, you can either have one or both, and the cost to register each is £82, so okay. 164 to register both of them. Now, the form would require your details as the donor and then your attorney details. You can have one or more attorneys, 
You can also set out replacement attorneys. You will need a certificate provider, so someone who you trust, it could be a colleague, a friend, uh, who will sign the document to say that you understand that what the power of attorney is and that there's no undue pressure being put on you to sign it. So that's your security there. Mm -hmm. You can also nominate people to be contacted uh, when the lasting power of attorney is registered. And that's an added security as well. Uh, once you've got your witnesses, your attorney, your replacement attorneys and your certificate provider, you can also set out in your uh, lasting power of attorney your preferences and your instructions to your attorney. So for example, I would put down in my attorney as my instructions, uh, in my power of attorney, my instructions every Friday I want to go to the mosque or I want to live near my brother or on Tuesday, I want to be wearing yellow. Now, I mean, you could do more or less you anything you want. you want. So okay. you, you have a lot of control over your lasting power of attorney. And like I've said, it's relatively cheap and it does give you peace of mind. How sure are you when you offer somebody or give somebody your lasting power of attorney, what you actually want to happen happens? As you say, going to the mosque every Friday or wearing yellow on a Tuesday, can you, in your own mind, do you know that is going to happen? Well, first of all, your attorney has to act in your best interest mm. under the Mental Capacity Act 2005. There's guidelines that an attorney should follow. On the lasting power of attorney form, there is a section where you put your preferences down so the attorney can act upon them and take them into consideration, but doesn't have to. And then there's another section which is called instructions where they have to follow. So once you've discussed it with your solicitor, what your preferences and your instructions are, because you've got to get the wording right, mm -hmm. uh, then you know the attorney will have to follow your instructions. Now, obviously I don't want to scare anybody who is watching at home, but give me some case scenarios or examples of what would happen um, if I didn't have last or power of attorney or lasting power of attorney against if I if I did uh. well if you didn't have if you lose mental capacity mm. and you don't have a, a power of attorney then your relatives will have to apply to the court of protection and as you said earlier on that slows the whole process that down. slows the whole process down and it also costs a lot of money okay uh, a lasting power of attorney doesn't cost a lot and will give you that peace of mind that And you how want. soon does that kick in? So for instance, if you do lose your mental capacity or, or the capacity to make decisions yourself, how soon, as opposed to going through the courts, which could take weeks or months or whatever, and expensive, how, how soon does the lasting power of attorney well, start Well, if off? the lasting power of attorney is registered, mm. the health and welfare will only come into play when you lose mental capacity. Okay. The financial lasting power of attorney, and I think I'm start calling it LPA from now on, yeah. it's so much easier. <laughs> Your financial LPA uh, can come into play uh, as soon as it's registered, which means that while you still have full mental capacity, your attorney can act on your behalf uh, with your consent. So, for example, if you're elderly and you don't get out as much as you want, your attorney can go to the bank or pay bills for you with your consent and then if you lose mental capacity later on, your attorney can act without your consent. Now, with, with, with everything that we, we, we've discussed, I mean, what other benefits are there for you? I mean, for instance, um, any tax benefits or anything that, that, that could be advantageous to you by having somebody take care of the affairs in that way? Well, I, I don't think there's any uh, benefit in terms of uh, tax uh, lasting power of attorney. It, it's, it's not so much as maybe a way a will is drafted to save on inheritance tax. Mm -hmm. This is the, the peace of mind that you will have that if anything does happen, uh, your relative will look, or people you trust will look after your interests. And the reason obviously we're talking about it this week on the show is that you as a very experienced solicitor will have probably been in court many occasions dealing with people's welfares that uh, haven't had in place LPAs or powers of attorney. Um, and it's probably a very, a distressing time for a lot of the members well, of the family. It is distressing uh, for them. I mean, I was looking at statistics before coming on, and at the moment, uh, 
800,000 people suffer from dementia and the Alzheimer's Society have said that by 2025 one million will suffer from uh, dementia. Uh, I've also looked at another statistic that every 90 seconds someone goes to hospital with a brain injury. Mm. Uh, not necessarily someone who's old. So you know, a lot of people think about the lasting power of attorney has, oh, I'm not that old and therefore I don't need one. But there's contact sport. You might play football. You might play rugby. You might be involved in a car accident. There's any number of reasons why you'd want to be considering a lasting power of attorney. Uh, rather than, I suppose, well, if you don't have one, you, you can see the grief that you will cause your relatives. Well, you, actually, you said a few examples of who would have one, but if you think about it, walking down the street, crossing the road, as you said, riding your bicycle, going on holiday, scuba diving, whatever it is that you well, absolutely. do I mean, in your daily life. Yeah, you can have cancer, you can have cancer treatment, you can have a heart attack, you can have a heart bypass. All of these requires family members around you to support you once you're ill. So it doesn't necessarily mean that a person who's over, say, 80 years of age should consider one. You should consider one whilst you're relatively young. And of course, once you're over 18 and you have mental capacity, you can have a power of attorney, well, a lasting power of attorney. Well, great minds think alike because that was going to be my next question. <laughs> you know, what age would you say somebody, realistic, I mean, legally, obviously, 18 and over, but what age would you say somebody should be thinking about having these things covered? I, I would say once you're married and you have children, you should realistically be thinking of actually having a lasting power of attorney. If you have a will, yeah. you should have a lasting power of attorney. So peace of mind is obviously a major thing. Mm -hmm. Here's one for you, and I don't, I like, don't like to throw in questions that we haven't to kind of had a little chat about before, but as a percentage of people who are in that situation, married with children, um, I'm guessing that there are far more people that don't have anything set up and arranged than do. Oh, absolutely. Uh, more people have wills uh, set up. A lot of people won't consider a lasting power of attorney because they don't feel as if, it's going to happen They're to old. them. Yeah, or it's or going to happen to them. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so uh, it's something I think as a lawyer, I would advise all my clients to get. Whether they get it or not, it's a different matter. But the advice is you should get one. Well, when you think about it, cost really in the grand scheme of things, when you've got pensions and you've got houses and cars and all the other things that could be covered and certainly helped by having one in place. You've spent all of your life to, let's say, the age of 25, 30, getting to that position in life. And for it to all be dealt with in a peace of mind way, it makes sense, surely. Well, absolutely. £82 per power of attorney is not a lot of money. And you can do it yourself, but if your affairs are complex, then get a solicitor. The other thing is that if you're on a low income, if your gross income is below 12,000, then you can get a reduction. Or if you're on benefits, you can get the exemption from the 82 pound. So it could end up costing you nothing. Yeah. Now, peace of mind is always the thing for me. And I'm not one of these uh, people who loves to go online and fill in forms because I want to make sure A, that I've done it correctly, and, or B, that I've done it in a way that's going to benefit me, me most. So day one somebody comes to uh, your offices makes a phone call to you um how does it happen how does a lasting power of attorney or power of attorney uh, happen and get put in place when somebody comes to see you and how long does it take for them to be in your presence well you'd initially speak to the client you'd ask him about what who his attorneys are who his witnesses are whether he has a certificate provider once you have that information, you will then complete the form and send it off to the uh, public guardian office. It takes about six to eight weeks okay. uh, for the lasting power of attorney to be registered. And then you have the peace of mind. So now it could mean one visit, it could mean two visits. It really depends on the client, his understanding of English, his age, whether he's able to understand legal terms. Mm. You try and make it as easy for them as possible, but Different people have different level of understanding. But certainly within one visit of seeing you, everything could be, the wheels could be put in motion oh, and, yes, and everything. Yeah. So if anybody's planning a long trip abroad, going on Hajj or anything like that and taking uh, something, a, a life decision to be away for a period of time, it's incredibly important. Well, it is. You can place. have your general power of attorney. You can have a lasting power of attorney. The choice is yours. Mm. Um, now, when um, the whole situation happens for somebody, I mean, as I said, Say something untowards did happen when, when you were a tra on your travels. Um, how does your attorney, um, wherever, if, say they're in the United Kingdom, be made aware that 
their actions are going to be kicking into place and starting to happen? Well, a lasting power of attorney, when it's sent back to you from the public guardian office, is stamped. Uh, banks have instruction to accept it. Uh, your pension provider will actually appreciate that you have a lasting power of attorney and will accept it. So there is procedures in place where uh, organisation, large organisation, will understand that uh, you are their attorney and looking after the person's interest. So there's not too many um, hoops to jump through if you are somebody's um, a, a power of, or have somebody's power of attorney in, in, under your wing. There's more hoop to jump through if you don't. If you have. don't. <laughs> it's always the way in life, isn't it? And the point of the, uh, uh, the legal forum is, is, is just to give people an insight into making them, their lives easier, you know, making their lives a lot more... Well, well, you can sleep at night a lot. It's, it's the information uh, to get them thinking about, uh, you know, what steps they should take to protect themselves and their loved ones. Um, finally, because we are virtually out of time, Shaquille, as always, it goes so quickly on these shows. Um, just give us an overview again, lasting power of attorney, power of attorney, which is more important to start with or are they equally more in, uh, as important of each other? Uh, from a long-term perspective, I would say a lasting power of attorney okay. because the financial lasting power of attorney uh, can come into play uh, even once you have your mental capacity with your consent. If you want it for a specific purpose or for a small period of time, then do a general power of attorney. Well, Shaquille, time is up as always. Thank I'll you see you next much. time. Thank Thanks you. very much as Thank always. You. Well, unfortunately, as I said, we have run out of time, but saying big thanks to Shaquille Shah, as always, for sharing his viewpoint on today's topic, which I hope has given you some help at home on these matters. But as always, please do bear in mind the views and opinions expressed in Legal Forum should be considered for informational purposes only and not case-specific legal advice. All topics are discussed in a generic nature, and it's important that you consult either with a CAB, Law Centre, or a solicitor before relying on it. So if you'd like to find out more about today's topic, power of attorney and lasting power of attorney, then please do get in touch and email us at legalforum at islamchannel.tv. Or if you'd like to watch any of our shows, you can view them online at www.islamchannel.tv. Thank you for watching. See you next time. That's all right. This program is sponsored by Tilson Solicitors.